Intro to Logic Part 8, Strength. If an argument is logically strong, this means that if its premises are true, the conclusion is probably true. And this can include very high degrees of probability. It does not include cases where if the premises are true, then the conclusion is necessarily true. But here's an example of a strong argument. Hoftor is a weightlifter, therefore Hoftor is strong. This is a strong argument because if someone is a weightlifter, it's highly probable that they are strong. A weak argument is one where even if the premises are true, this does not prove that the conclusion is probably true. Now, a weak argument can still have a true conclusion, but the problem is that the premise does not give us good reason to believe the conclusion. The premises do not increase or establish the high probability of the conclusion. Here's an example. Thor is strong, therefore Thor is a weightlifter. This is a weak argument because it's not the case that the vast majority of strong people are professional weightlifters. For example, people can get strength by other means. So let's talk about the difference between being logically strong and logically valid. A strong argument is one where if the premises are true, then the conclusion is probably true. A valid argument is one where if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. It's logically necessary that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is true. In a valid argument, if you had true premises, if you tried to make the conclusion false, you would create a logical contradiction. In a strong argument, it's always logically possible or conceivable that the conclusion is false even if the premises are true. A strong argument um, makes the conclusion highly probable based on the premises, but there's no logical contradiction if you have true premises and a false conclusion. A cogent argument is one that's both strong and has true premises. For example, Hoftor is a weightlifter, therefore Hoftor is probably strong. An uncogent argument is either weak or it has at least one false premise or both. So two examples. The first, Thor is strong, therefore Thor is a weightlifter. This is a logically weak argument, so that's enough to make it uncogent. Example number two, Thor is a weightlifter, therefore Thor is a superhero. This is uh, an argument that has a false premise. It's false that the god Thor, or the Marvel character, I guess, is a weightlifter. Um, it is true that he's a superhero, but it's also a logically weak argument because just because someone is a weightlifter, that does not give a strong reason to believe that they're a superhero. So in example number two, it happens to both be weak and have a false premise. Um, if an argument is either weak or has a false premise or both, it counts as uncogent. As with deductive arguments, there are two types of analysis of inductive arguments. Truth value analysis asks, are the premises and conclusion actually true? Logical analysis asks, is the argument logically strong? So these are separate questions. Strong arguments can have a false premise or a false conclusion. Arguments that have true premises and true conclusion can be logically weak. Remember that truth only applies to an individual proposition, an individual premise or conclusion. Logical strength applies to a whole argument. So it's incorrect to say that a premise is strong or a conclusion is strong or weak. It is correct to say that an argument is strong or weak. It's incorrect to say that an argument is true or false. Let's look at an example argument. A jar contains 100 marbles. There are 99 black marbles in the jar. Therefore, the marble picked is black. And we can assume for context that you're picking a marble at random, sight unseen, from the jar. So truth value analysis asks whether the premises or the conclusion are true. This is a hypothetical example, so we can't really test it. But let's just assume for the sake of argument, the premises and the conclusion are true. Um, notice that it's often more difficult to determine the truth of premises or conclusion than it is to determine if the argument is logically valid or logically strong. That's one of the reasons why the concepts of validity and strength are so powerful, because even if you don't know 
whether premises or conclusion are true, you can still tell whether the argument is valid or strong. So because this is an inductive argument that's trying to prove the conclusion is probably true based on premises, we're going to ask for our logical analysis, is the argument strong or is it weak? The argument is logically strong. If the premises are true, there is a 99% probability that the conclusion is true. For the sake of making things precise, in terms of exact probabilities, we can define strong as the premises making the probability of the conclusion greater than 50%. If the probability of the conclusion is 50% or less, or is just unclear based on the premises, then the argument is weak. So let's consider a case where we have this argument, the premises are true, and yet we pick a white marble. So if we picked a white marble from the jar instead of a black marble, would this show that the argument is actually weak? After all, it gave us a false conclusion. The answer is no. The argument is still strong even if the conclusion turns out to be false. Why? Remember that a strong argument does not guarantee the conclusion based on the premises. This means that it's always logically possible, even in a strong argument, that the conclusion is false. The argument still counts as strong, even with the false conclusion, as long as the premises do make the conclusion probable. And remember that probable, even highly probable, is not absolutely certain. So let's look at the role of new information in assessing inductive arguments. There's two main things that new information can do in how we analyze or evaluate inductive arguments. First, new information can challenge the truth of a premise. It can make one of the premises of our argument less probable. Here's an example. Premise, the jar contains 90 black marbles and 10 white marbles. New information. We draw 10 marbles from the jar at random and they're all white. So this new information does not absolutely guarantee the premise is false, but it does make it less probable. Now we're using probability with in two different respects here. We can both talk about inductive strength, which is how logically probable the premises make the conclusion. So this is about the logical connection between premises and conclusion. If premises are true, do they make the conclusion highly probable? If so, the argument as a whole is strong. But we can also talk about probability with respect to the truth of individual propositions. Oftentimes in real life, we're not absolutely certain if a premise is true or false. There's some probability that it's true based on the evidence at hand. And this is um, relevant to this first type of new information, where we're given new information that makes us less confident in the truth of one of our premises. A second role of new information is challenging not the truth of an individual premise, but the strength of an overall argument. Here's an example. If we have an argument, a jar contains 100 black and white marbles, Therefore, the marble picked is black. If we only have that one premise and the conclusion, that would be a logically weak argument because we don't have any information about the proportion of black and white marbles. However, if we're given a new premise, a new piece of information, there are 90 black marbles and 10 white marbles in the jar, this changes the strength of the argument. So in this case, we're given a new piece of information that can function as an additional premise in our argument, which serves to increase the probability of the conclusion. In this case, it makes the conclusion 90% probable. So this strengthens the argument logically. So let's go through some sample problems. One type of sample problem is where we're given an inductive argument and we have to assess whether it's logically strong or logically weak. Example, Shane tossed a fair coin 10 times and each time it came up heads. Therefore, the next toss will be tails. So a bit of clarification, a fair coin is one that's evenly balanced. 
So it's equally likely to land on either heads or tails. So if that's your premise and that's your conclusion, is this a strong or a weak argument? The argument is weak. If a coin is truly fair, that means each toss is going to have a 50% probability of being heads or being tails. And this is true regardless of the previous few or many tosses. Each toss is an independent event. You can have a streak where it comes up one way or the other, but as long as the coin is actually fair and balanced, then there's gonna be a 50% probability the next toss will be tails. So because the probability of the conclusion is only 50%, it will count as a weak argument. Another sample problem. Amoxicillin is usually effective at treating strep throat. You have strep throat and you are taking amoxicillin. Therefore, amoxicillin will be effective in treating your strep throat. Is this logically strong or logically weak? It is a strong argument. If it's true that amoxicillin is usually effective at treating strep throat, then that means it will probably be effective at treating your strep throat as well. So the word usually or most often, words like that, um, often can be used in inductive arguments to indicate greater than 50% probability. So if you have that in a premise, um, if the structure of the argument is correct, it can count as a logically strong argument. Let's look at another type of sample problem. In this case, we're given an argument and then we're given a new piece of information. And we have to decide if the new piece of information strengthens or weakens the argument. So we're interpreting the new piece of information as another premise in the argument. Does this strengthen or weaken the inductive inference? So here's an argument. The lamp in your room does not work. Therefore, the light bulb is defective. So if we're given this new piece of information, your Amazon Echo is not working and it is connected to the same outlet as the lamp, does that strengthen or weaken the argument? The answer is it weakens the argument. So the argument is concluding that the reason why the lamp does not work is because the light bulb is defective. However, if you have another electronic device plugged into the same outlet that's also not working, that piece of information instead increases the probability that the reason why your lamp is not working is because it's not receiving electricity at all. You may have a blown fuse, for example. Now, the additional piece of information does not guarantee that the conclusion of the argument is false. After all, the Amazon Echo could also be defective for some reason, not having to do with its power supply. But that new piece of information does make the conclusion less likely, so it weakens the argument. So same argument, new piece of information. You replace the light bulb and the lamp now works. Does that strengthen or does it weaken the argument? That strengthens the argument. So it makes it more likely the light bulb was the reason why the lamp was not working. Even this does not guarantee the truth of the conclusion, logically speaking. You can imagine scenarios where the light bulb is not the problem, but the lamp now worked again after you replaced the light bulb. So maybe the power grid had a temporary failure and you replaced the light bulb just in time for the failure to be corrected. It's unlikely, but it's logically possible. So this shows, even though this piece of information strengthens the argument, it does not make it valid. Next up, part nine, enthymemes and rhetorical use of language. This is when we're given an argument in a form that has something missing, that's an enthymeme, or certain propositions of the argument are suggested indirectly by rhetorical use of language, and we have to do some interpretive work in order to understand the argument. 